Hi everyone, it's Sue Plum here to share another scrapbook process video with you. Today's layout that I am sharing was created for the Challenge Me, Challenge You series that I am doing each month here on YouTube with my dear friend Gwen from Created by Gwen. So this month Gwen has challenged me to work with metal dies and I have challenged Gwen to work with distress oxides at least two ways. So uh, you may have seen that Gwen actually got her Distress Oxide out recently and is starting to play with it. And I thought using it one way is just not enough. So I've challenged her to use it more than one way this month on her page. And she said to me, I think you should get your big shot out and let's get some dyes out. So I've pulled out a selection of dyes there. I've pulled out a selection of Distress Oxides. I thought about different ways that I might use those distress oxides, so I pulled out some underused stamps. I've actually got a, a set of um, Amy Tan little planner stamps there, and I've also got a large background stamp from Carabel Studio. You can see that was my very old, well-used big shot there. There's two die sets that I had out there. I had one from Uniquely Creative. The other one there is a Maggie Holmes one. And I was documenting some photos of my boys from one of their um, activities that they've done recently, which was a colour run that they did. So what else have I pulled out? I've also pulled out some Vicky Booten supplies because I love working with all the bright colours in these collections. So I've got some assorted papers there. They were from different collections, they were some scraps, and I thought I might make good use of them here in this layout, given that I was working with those colours, those photos featuring all those bright colours. Okay, so let's get into it. So I decided to use one of those patterned papers as my border for my page, and I was working on some smooth white cardstock for my background. This is where I was going to do my mixed media, and you can see that page there with all the circles, coloured circles on it. I decided to use that as a border. I didn't want to waste the whole sheet so as usual I cut out the guts from the middle of the paper just so I can put that aside and use it on another project. So this project I kind of knew what I was going to do with the Distress Oxide. I, if you've seen my videos before, you know that Distress Oxides are one of my absolute favorite mediums to work with. They are extremely versatile. They have a huge range of colors and I, I love all the different ways that you can use them in projects. So I had decided to start off by creating a bit of a watercolor background on this page. So you can see that I have pulled out my photos there and had a look at the dominant colors so you can see that there's a bit of orange going on there's a bit of red going on there's some blue going on so I decided to use those as the three predominant colors on my page now I'm starting off here with a watercolor technique so I've just got a bit of plastic packaging there where I've swiped the oxide ink pad onto it I've spritzed it with a little bit of water just to make it more viscous on the page smoosh it around and then smoosh. That, I think that's the technical term for that. You just smoosh it down onto the page, straight onto the cardstock, and you will see the cardstock just suck up that beautiful colour. You can see how vibrant it is on the page, and I absolutely love them. Now, there was no gesso, there was no pre-preparation done on this page. It was just straight 350 GSM cardstock, smooth white, oxide straight down onto it, nothing else done. The only thing I would say is just be wary not to get your cardstock too wet. You can see that I haven't put an excessive amount of water on there but if you are planning on getting your cardstock really really wet maybe add a layer of clear or white gesso first just so that you don't get too much warping but this was not very wet so it was all fine. Now you can see I've already moved on to the second technique with the oxide. So I'm using a stencil there, which was a Vicky Booten one. And you can see I've used some washi tape just to mask off one of those little sort of starburst, sunburst patterns. And I'm just using the second oxide, which is abandoned coral there, and a little sponge dauber just to daub through the um, stencil and just get the pattern down on the page. Now I didn't have any particular 
method to where I was placing these, you can see that I was generally trying to keep the pattern layered over the top of where I already had the background color. I knew roughly where my photos were going to sit on this page and I didn't want to cover the entire page in mixed media. I wanted to keep some white space on there because that allows the viewer's eye somewhere to rest. You can't have busyness all over the page because otherwise people just don't know where to look and it doesn't give them a chance to relax and, and follow the flow of your page with the eye as you intend them to. Okay, so here's technique number three and my third color. Now you can see I've, I haven't really allowed drying time between these layers because as I said, they weren't that wet, so they really didn't need it. But be aware that if you are going to use a very wet layer on top of a wet layer, that you really should dry these oxides off completely in between because if they are still a little bit wet and you do have warm and cool colors layering like I've got going on here, if they're both wet, they're going to mix and you're going to end up with mud. So you can see I've got that Carabelle Studio stamp, that large sort of grunge. It's got text. It's got dots. It's a very mixed, big background stamp. And I simply use the oxide just to stamp with it there. So that's three techniques on the page already. All of them were super simple, super quick. And you can see how effective they look with those different colors and different techniques layered over the top of each other. Now, this sort of background was perfect for these photos because, as I said, these photos were from my son's color run that they went and did. So you can see I've got a before and after photo of them there. So before, there they are looking all nice and fresh in their white shirts, clean hair, clean everything. And then at the end, not so much, particularly the one on the right, Hunter, who actually ended up swimming through the slime pit. Yes, he swam through the slime pit. Um, anyway, I digress. So you can see I've moved on to my pattern paper layers here. What I'm actually doing is I'm just looking to create some photo mats just to sit in behind the photo, just to tie in the paper layers with the colors that I had going on on the background and also to help frame those photos and help them pop on the page. So you can see I've chosen an orange because I did have a lot of that orange oxide. Um, oh, what's the name of it? It's the pumpkin one. Oh, sorry, I'm having a mental blank. I'm recording this voiceover very late at night, as I usually do when it's nice and quiet. Anyway, um, yeah, so I've used an orange layer in the pattern paper. I've also got that scrap of the color wheel that was on another one of Vicky's pattern papers. And you would have seen me use the remainder of that color wheel on a previous page. But being the hoarder I am, I don't tend to throw out larger bits of scraps like that. I tend to use them again if I can. So you can see that the orange and yellow section I had left from that color wheel just tucked in beautifully in behind those photos. So I have pulled out my big shot you can see here now I'm not going to bore you I didn't I did a lot of this cutting off camera because you didn't need to see me do all the cutting I ended up choosing two dies to use so I've got that one there that you can see with that I am actually popping the paper out of now which says this and that was from that Maggie Holmes die set and the other one that I've actually cut, you can see on my desk there, is a stitched sun die. And that one was from Uniquely Creative. And I used another of my pattern paper scraps to cut out all of those little suns that I'm going to put on my page. Now, I didn't really want to waste all of this green paper. I thought it made a really good contrast and added in an extra color into the palette that I was already using. And it tied in beautifully with those die, um, those die cuts that I'd made there. So I just tore off those little tiny shreds that I had left over and tucked those in behind my photos as well. So you can see that I've established a horizontal plane behind my photos. That just sort of anchors everything down and allows me to build my layers from that. And I'm figuring out where I'm going to tuck in all those stitched sun die cuts that I've made. Try saying that 10 times quickly. Um, those stitched suns 
that I've cut out from pattern paper. And you can see that I am trying to layer them in amongst those other pattern paper layers that I've got going on. So I've got some tucked in below the pattern papers and I've got some layered over the top of the pattern papers. And this just builds on all of those layers that I had going on on the background and just helps to give your page a bit more depth. So I've got my two photos. I've got, I've already used my oxides three ways. So I've already ticked off that criteria. Now with these dies that I've got, I didn't want to use too many dies in the end. I did pull out, as I said, that, that whole set, but Really the only one that I was drawn to was the word this and I knew I wanted to use it as my title but I wanted to use it twice. So I have cut it out from blue, that navy blue pattern paper but when I put it against that very busy page that I had going on with the background and all those different colours and shapes it didn't stand out enough. So I pulled out my white sharpie paint pen there, just a white one. And you can see that I am just going over the text just to help that word pop. And you'll see what a difference it actually makes compared to when it had no, no paint or no definition on it at all. So my title was actually going to be From This to This because we were talking about the before and after photos of their colour run there. So obviously from this when they were nice and clean to this when they were filthy dirty at the end. Now I did um, just tack down those, you can see I'm just tacking down those die cuts but I've only tacked them down in the centre and I'm actually going through now and using my fingers just to bend up all those little rays of those suns just to help give a bit of dimension to the page and just a bit more visual interest. I, I do like things coming up away from the page, I don't like things to look too flat. So you'll also notice that when I stick pieces of pattern paper down on my page, I tend to curl up the corners and bend up the corners and I like to distress things. I just like that texture on the page. I've also added on some frayed gauze in behind my photos. Again, this is for texture. I also added, like adding in that little bit of white that helps tie into my background as well and it just gives that bit of separation between all the colours of the background and then obviously the main focus of my page which is of course my photos. Now you'll see that as this page starts to come together that a lot of that mixed media work that I did at the beginning has been covered up and this tends to be the nature of the beast when you're working with mixed media. You do all this beautiful work on your background and then you don't end up seeing a lot of the background. Now I'm okay with that. I don't have a problem with that because I like the way that these layers then work and peek out from under the other things that I've put on my page. Certainly if you are putting all that work into your background and you don't want to use so much pattern paper on your page and you don't want to cover up as much, that's entirely up to you. Um, this tends to be the way I work and like I said, I'm good with it. I don't mind at all. So I'm working to find where I'm going to pop those two main words of my title on the page. You can see that I'm going to put one up alongside my photo up the top there and then I'm tucking that other one in the other space down in the bottom there. That was kind of why I placed these photos like this because I knew I would put my title in alongside. Now I am going to dig out some alphas from my stash in a minute. Ones that I had, I believe they're Pink Fresh Studio, the alphas that I pull out. They're just small alpha stickers and they are a very, very close blue. Here they are. Um, they are from a boy collection. I can't remember what it was. A boy's Fort, I think. Um, they're a very, very close blue to that blue Vicky Booten pattern paper that I used. So I was pretty happy that I was able to match that up. Don't mind my big head when I'm leaning in to get my alphas on the page. Um, yeah, so I had my mixed, mixed font title. I do love a good mixed font title. So I do like the way that the... Um, alpha stickers which you can see are sort of a tall narrow skinny font which is definitely my preferred style of font um, contrasts really well with the script of those die cut words 
Okay, now I've left this part in for your viewing, viewing pleasure, but I'm leaving this in to show you that not everything works out as you want it to work out, and sometimes you've got to go back and cover things up. So I really wanted to use these Amy Tan planner stamps. So you can see that I tested it out with a blue oxide there and I just sort of stamped them out on that bit of paper towel that I had. And then I'd stamped a couple of those little chevrons onto the page just to the right of my photos. I did not like the way that those, I picked them up on clearance many years ago and I had barely used those Amy Tan stamps. I just did not like the way they stamped. They're a rubber stamp, they're a circular stamp, but you can see how the edge of that stamp, the edge of the circle comes out. And I really did not want the edge of that circle, that circular shape showing. I just wanted the chevron on the page. And I'd already gone ahead and I'd stamped it directly onto the pattern paper. And at this point in time, that is glaring to me. And it's really, really annoying me um, because it didn't stamp out the way I wanted it to. So you can see that I've gone back into my stash and I found some other chevrons that I've stamped there. That one was a stamp from Viva Las Vegas stamp. And I'm happy with the way that looks because that is... The way that I've stamped those chevrons there, those rows of chevrons, they're pulling the eye in and drawing the eye to the title and they're also pulling the eye in from either side of the page and into the centre where I want people to look. So you can see what I did with those other chevrons that I did not like the way they had stamped. I've gone and covered them up with a sunglasses sticker which came from... I think it might have been from, no, I don't think it was from Colour Study, actually. It might have been from Let's Wander, those little sunglasses. Super cute. I had a whole mix of Vicky Booten embellishments on the page here. I had Thickers packs and I had stickers and I had ephemera packs. And honestly, my page was so busy, I really didn't need to use a lot of it. So I was just pulling out a few select items just to finish this page off. So once I'd stuck those little sunglasses sticker there, I had to make a cluster out of it. So I found that little blue camera, which tied in beautifully with the blue of the title. I also found a little um, sticker there that said, oh boy. I've got a few little chipboard pieces on there. I've got that large chipboard arrow um, above the second part of the title, which pointing right into the mess on my boy's shirts. And I'm going through with a sticker sheet where I had a whole, there was a number of stars. I think that also, oh, which one was that? I don't know. I've got so much Vicky Boot and stuff. Honestly, sometimes it's hard to keep it all straight. I don't know which is which. I just know that I love it and it all works beautifully together. So I tend to just mix it all together anyway. So tell me, are you the sort of person who likes to use collections? If you have collections from the same person, do you like to mix them together or do you like to try and keep them separate? Like what is your preference? Because I just find when things work well together, I don't really care what collection they're from. I'll just mix them all up. Okay, so I am doing another technique with the oxide now. I am using it to add my splatters at the end here. I just put a bit on my messy mat, spritzed it with a little bit of water, mixed it around and used a fine brush and added my splatters. So that's four techniques with oxides, four different colour oxides there. And I've also used two metal dyes. So I think I've ticked off this month's criteria. And that's how it turned out. Thanks so much for stopping by and joining me for this video today. Make sure you go over and pop over and look at Gwen's. I'll put the link below and I'll see you next time. Bye.